Hey guys, I'm on my way to meet Ian at Polar Mobility. And Polar Mobility is where I got my uh, general components van heater. So this is van heater part two. Now, this is more of a technical video. Uh, the part one was more sort of my thoughts on things, but I always tell you guys to do your own research and talk to an expert. So that's where we're going to go talk to Ian and see what he has to say. He's going to talk about the specific GC heater that I've got, give you information on that. He's going to talk about the other brands on the market uh, and what they do. And he's going to give his opinion on um, the quality of the different uh, heaters that you can buy, including the ones that you can buy off of Amazon. Now, these are just his opinions. Um, everybody has a different experience. Um, and of course, you know, he sells heaters, so he's going to be partial to the ones that he sells. But I really do think he's got a lot of interesting information, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I'm going to try and not make it too long, but I want to make sure that I get in the information that matters as far as, um, you know, how to maintain them, how to run them, the, the just the realities of these heaters so that you can make the right decision for you. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Ian. Well, I was born at a very young age. <laughs> I, you know, no, my name is Ian, and um, I work at Polar Mobility, and we do heating and air conditioning products. We focus on Western Canada, and of course, probably our biggest product line, we've been doing Eberspacher or Espar heaters. They shorten the name in North America um, so that people in Canada and the United States can actually say SPAR but uh, just in the last couple of years they changed everything and they went back to the original name Eberspacher so that it was the same all over the world. Eberspacher is the largest manufacturer in the world of fuel fired heater systems. They're known to be the top of the heap or the Cadillac of heaters. We also carry two other lines of of heater systems that are used in all kinds of applications. A product called ProHeat, which is owned by Dometic, and Dometic Corporation, as you know, is um, they're a huge multinational company, and they sell all kinds of different components for uh, RVs and vans and this type of application. Uh, the third is a lower cost, lower dollar. It is a Chinese manufactured, Chinese made heater called General Components. And they got into the whole heater market um, only a, a few years ago. And they were produced to be high quality um, and fit in the middle of the road um, so that they're affordable. Eberspacher and the other big uh, heater manufacturer in the world is Webasto. The two of them are only 80 miles apart in Germany. Um, and they're very similar. They're both fantastic heaters. And GC, they saw a huge market uh, because of the cost of Espar and Webasto. Um, to be able to come in with a really decent product. Um, there are so many new spring up Chinese companies um, that were building heaters at a very low quality. And uh, we've been very pleasantly surprised because it is a decent alternative to the SBAR. We've been the master distributor for SBAR since 1978. So it's been a long time. 
and when we first started selling the GC heaters we were really unsure because we've always been known as the SBAR people. They are a decent alternative. Well, Polar Mobility, um, we're Alberta based. We have our own locations in Calgary, Red Deer and Edmonton. But then we have a very large dealer distribution network throughout Alberta, BC and into Saskatchewan. Now GC themselves, they're based for all of North America in the Vancouver Lower Mainland area. And they have other dealers, other distributors, just like us, in every major city in Canada. In the last few years, the van life community and, and doing builds like this for us have just exploded. It's been uh, absolutely amazing. We probably do over 200 installations per year um, in this application. People that are converting their vans for uh, recreation or for living full time. So it's, uh, it's becoming more and more a very large part of our business. We find with any heater system, whether it's the S-Bar, Webasto, Pro Heat, GC, or any others, 90% of the issues and problems that happen with the heaters in the first year are directly related to the installation. There are a number of differences that set the Webasto, S-Bar, and GC heaters far above these heaters that you find um, sold on the internet mostly Amazon and, and others. The electronic control module on an SBAR heater is completely sealed, completely packed in vibration resistant gel and it's completely sealed from moisture, from any kind of corrosion getting into the electronics. Um, they're heat protected. With GC they've tried to follow in the footsteps of the the big two some of their control circuits are a little more open to the atmosphere but they are still protected with many of the the knockoff heaters they're just plain straight circuit boards and with moving air across them all of the time air will always carry a certain amount of moisture the moisture will collect on the electronic components and that's when they start having electrical issues and problems. A lot of the Chinese heaters come with very light gauge electrical so the wiring is very fragile. The gauge of the wiring isn't thick enough or big enough to carry the current or the power that flows through it to provide the proper amount of voltage and current to each individual component. Their fuel pumps aren't calibrated in the same kind of way and set the same way that the other heaters are. So they tend to either overfuel, which is just as bad as underfueling the heater. With overfueling the heater, there ends up being a lot of unburnt fuel or partially burnt fuel that just turns to a very light fluffy soot inside the heater and that over time will pack up inside the heater and plug it completely. Once it gets impacted it turns into a very rock hard carbon that is incredibly difficult to clean and most of the time it causes the heater to start to warp and melt down on the inside of the heat exchanger. Uh, once the heat exchanger or the flame tube distorts, uh, it has to be replaced. Proheat and SBAR both have integrated automatic uh, altitude adjustment built into all of their heater systems now. So to over 10,000 feet above sea level, they will automatically adjust. Anything higher than that, there is a high altitude kit 
that can be purchased and that will take the pressure, um, ambient pressure, and it will tell the electronic control module in the heater either to speed up the blower system, maybe uh, speed up or slow down, thin out the amount of fuel. And it's usually at high altitudes uh, telling the, the fuel pump to deliver less fuel to the heater so that it will burn properly without building this carbon mm -hmm. and having unburnt fuel. So what do we got here? So Adelina, I went and I grabbed a General Components GC heater. So this is the same heater yeah. that we have mounted in your van. Yeah. So how it works is air circulating in your van is sucked in through here. There's a fan system, just like your house furnace. So it pulls the air in over a hot heat exchanger and then you have your hot air that comes out this end. Mm -hmm. Now you have to be very careful never to put anything really close to this outlet. It could potentially put out in the neighborhood of 200 degrees Fahrenheit hot air. At the same time that this fan is pulling the air across the heat exchanger, the same fan is also pulling combustion air inside the heater. The fuel pump is sending fuel through this little pipe okay. into the heater and the air and fuel mixture mix together and inside there's a solid ceramic pin. They call it the glow pin, mm -hmm. which is the same in any diesel engine. Um, it's the same in the gas heaters and the diesel heaters. They work on the same principle. That glow pin will turn on for about 90 seconds and it will get to glowing hot, hot enough to be able to ignite that fuel air mixture oh. and establish a flame burning inside. So there's an actual flame, of course there is, it's an internal combustion engine, right? Right. So there's an actual flame in there. Yeah. Exactly. And that flame will burn inside the flame tube mm -hmm. and that's what produces the incredible heat mm -hmm. that you feel. It's always best when you can to have the heater in a well ventilated area. Mm -hmm so that you can get airflow not only through the heater but around the outside to keep the casing cool. Mm -hmm. But we normally will tell people two to three inches on each side on top. Yeah. At a general rule, the diameter of the, the inlet, you want to have twice the diameter in distance. It looks to be a two inch, you want to be about four inches. Now, when you mount it yourself and install it, don't ever have the heat and the return or the process air coming out and facing in the same general area or location mm -hmm. because you'll have the heater short cycle and it will only heat a very small area and then you'll have problems with the heater because it will always be prematurely shutting down mm -hmm. and it won't properly regulate the temperature in the entire space. The majority of these heaters, the ones on the, the internet for sure, are diesel. Is it, right. Why is that? Is it because they were traditionally for transport trucks that are always diesel? Traditionally, transport trucks, crane cabs, yeah, tractors, yeah. heavy machinery. I do have one question, uh, and it would never occur to me to run this while I was driving. Sure. Is that a good instinct, or, or do people run these while they're driving? Absolutely. Really? Okay. So anytime you need supplemental heat, Oh, um, that's safe to do. So, Good to know. providing the installation is done properly. But we try to run the intake um, to a clean air area that isn't in the direct travel of the vehicle when it is moving. Mm -hmm. So, likewise, the exhaust. Yeah. You don't want the exhaust to pool underneath the vehicle. So, uh, especially... You know, for long periods of time, the vehicle is sitting. You don't want to create any situation that the exhaust fumes will remain under the vehicle and then get sucked possibly up. get sucked up, brought in from an open door or holes in the floor. Anyone using any kind of fuel-fired heater uh, should always have a carbon monoxide detector inside the vehicle. You don't want it to suck its own exhaust in yeah. at all. You, you want to keep the two pipes 
as far away as possible. If you watched my first video, you know how impressed I am with the display <laughs> on these ones. <laughs> so so. Is, is what I'm dreaming about possible? The fact that, yeah. and in your comment when I first talked about getting a different controller display was very valid, right? Like if, you, if I have an issue, there's going to be an error code that's going to show up. Right. right, and I've looked at the manual, so I know that, <coughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll at least know which what the problem is. If we put in a new display, a new controller, their error codes won't match up. However, as like you suggested, we can leave that con controller attached; it'll be tucked in a cupboard, and then have the other one that is so much nicer um, to just control the the that's the that's on off cool. functions. Yeah. You know, the temperature. Yeah. You're always going to see, especially in the gasoline heaters, little air bubbles from time to time. And that's normal. And that's normal. Okay. The problem is when you see gaps mm -hmm. in the fuel line, fuel and then uh, a few millimeters, mm -hmm. you know, or larger mm -hmm. gap in the fuel. Um, there's some kind of a restriction there. Mm -hmm. And that could be as simple as clamps that aren't tight. Mm -hmm. Or the plastic fuel line may have a crack in it and it's sucking air in. Oh, yeah. There could be a number of reasons. Yeah. And the best thing to do is go through the entire fuel system right from the source, make sure the clamps are tight, make sure the connections are all um, pushed on. Yeah. When you're butting two pieces of fuel line together, they all come with these rubber connectors. You want to make sure that this plastic tubing touches this plastic here. All the way in, okay. All the way in. Yeah. so that the two pieces inside meet and it doesn't create a little gap in there yeah. because that little gap will create those air pockets right. in, in the fuel. Air. That makes sense. So and you'll never be able to completely get rid of that. You'll always have continual issues. And you won't even see where the problem is because That's right. it's hidden behind here. It's very difficult to diagnose and find. They don't ever want you to cut this with a pair of pliers because the fuel line is calibrated to what the pump can push. And by cutting it with a pair of pliers or s uh, side cutters, something like that, it will distort the fuel line. So you always want to cut the fuel line flat with a good blade knife. So, so tell me, why is the display so, dis so disappointing on these? Uh, did they ever ask for feedback? <laughs> they do. And we've even given them feedback when yes. they haven't asked. <laughs> and GC is working hard Are they? to come up with even if a it was timer. just bigger. Yeah. Like, like uh, luckily, it's very easy to use, right? Like once once you set it up, but it's just you know it's just not as pretty as <laughs> some of those other ones. I must said. tell you, we we sell out of polar uh, in the neighborhood of three to five thousand s-bar heaters a year mm -hmm. gc because it's a newer product we're we're in the neighborhood of you know several hundred mm -hmm. we have had more complaints <laughs> about this little timer <laughs> than Nobody complains any about the other <laughs> timer that we have yeah the timer or it's the, the size of it well, it's the control, yeah. the timer, yeah. you know, and everyone's concern is that thing is so small, and it is. Yeah, it really so is. It really Luckily, is. it's not wireless, because it would get lost in a heartbeat. And really, you just hit on the, the solution and answer ultimately, mm -hmm. because just like everything, all of the heater companies are racing for apps. Yes that you can control your heater. So Adelina, you were asking me earlier, yeah. what are some of the things that people can do for maintenance? The heaters all work just like your house furnace. It brings air in the one side, it heats it up and puts hot air out. Yeah. So it's a, a house furnace for your car. Well, as it's pulling in air, it's also pulling in dust, dirt, debris, maybe dog hair, cat hair, everything gets sucked in on this combustion side of the heater. If you're living full time in the vehicle, you might want to do this twice a year. Mm -hmm. Is open up the lid of the heater and clean out 
the heat exchanger on top of the heat exchanger clean out all of that fur um hair yeah. debris Lint. leaves yeah. lint that gets sucked in on the on the fan side of the heater gets trapped either in this portion of the heater or worse gets to the heat exchanger that's extremely hot the heaters are intrinsically safe the flame burns only inside all of the exhaust the fuel the combustion everything is sealed to the outside but if you have leaves that blow into the van or hair from a pet mm -hmm. and it collects on the outer jacket of that heat exchanger i don't know there's the potential that something could go very wrong that's right yeah and you don't want that no so no. it's best to always make sure that you regularly clean it out on the s bar eberspacher heaters the there are clips ah. and you just carefully pull off the clips and you can remove the entire top cover of the heater gc heater is very similar in construction and looks yes. to the webasto heaters there are little tabs here on the heater yes where the lid snaps into oh. so you very carefully squeeze and press and uh, to be able to open them up to be able to do that maybe get the vacuum cleaner in there and suck it out vacuum. do it when the heater is not turned on and running and, and do it when just it's for cool. safety yes yes should i be running this once a week once a month that's a really good really good question even in the summertime fire it up and let it run twice a month for a half an hour at a time and what that does is it keeps all of the bearings circulating yeah. turning it keeps dust and dirt and debris from collecting on the suction side of the intake it keeps the exhaust pipe mm -hmm. from having debris collecting it the key is every couple of weeks mm -hmm. start it up let it run for a period of time on the air heaters it will keep the bearings from sitting in one place and vibration going down the road mm -hmm. causing issues or problems mm -hmm. it'll blow out all the dust dirt and debris and just help keep them cleaner as a general rule yeah. the customers who run their heater regularly we find have less issue less problem and they tend to have greater lifespan mm -hmm. on the heater as you know i don't have an electrical system in the van my heater is tied to the house battery in the van so two kilowatts roughly we're about seven thousand five hundred British thermal units mm -hmm. BTUs of heat output what I suggest if you spend the entire night with the heater running and the vehicle not running first of all you have to have decent batteries yes right um, but you need to have adequate time to charge that battery back up yeah so you want to get driving the next and you day. want to get driving you want to put that vehicle under load mm -hmm. so that the alternator is working hard enough to actually charge the battery mm -hmm. because batteries don't always charge properly or fully at idle if they're going to run this on the house battery then they need to make sure that they're charging their house battery yes. the next day yeah. yes yeah. most heaters they're very similar in the electrical power draws mm -hmm. they'll draw 9 to 10 amps of battery power for 90 seconds and that's on initial startup once the sensor inside the flame detector detects that there's a flame burning it will extinguish that and you'll drop from that nine amps of battery power typically down to about 1.8 amps of power yeah. and once the heater is up to temperature and it's just cycling to maintain uh, an s-bar heater i know mm -hmm. would draw about 0.8 of an amp of battery power which is very very, very low. low i noticed that they're also really good on gas <laughs> idling the vehicle you'd be burning well over a liter per hour mm -hmm. with the heater running you would likely be under a liter for an eight to ten hour yeah period. Uh, so i really appreciate you taking the time to do this it's I really been fantastic <laughs> and thank I, you I it's an you're honor still, you're still recovering um but if people have questions what is the best obviously i'm going to put the the contact information in the show notes but what's the 
best route? Is there uh, on your website a sort of a Q&A or is, should they email, phone, what, what should they do? Email is usually the easiest. Mm -hmm. Call in, ask okay. questions. If you want to tackle and install yourself, we'd be more than happy if you buy the heater from us to help you out, to give you some tips and pointers. Many people are worried about tying into the fuel system. Yep. That's one of the reasons why we do so many installations yeah. all of the time. Yep. Typically, the customer can drop the van off to us in the morning mm -hmm. and pick it up on their way home from work that night. Yeah, which is what I did. So. Awesome. So, I'll put the contact information down below. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> really, really appreciate this. This is all this technical information that I don't feel comfortable giving anybody because I'm not an expert. So I gave you an expert to answer all of your questions. And I'm so, uh, I'm so happy that you went through the maintenance and all of that. So thank you. And uh, yeah, guys, if you are interested in buying one of these, installing it yourself, having somebody install it for you, um, and you're in... Western Canada? Yes. Then uh, these are the guys to come to, um, or they can direct you where to go. So, yeah, thank you so much.